Hello learners, welcome to NIOS. Today, we will take up a fresh topic of your history syllabus. We will study lesson number two from the module on ancient India. The title of the chapter is The Geographical Setting and Prehistoric Cultures in India. Learners, as you know, that in order to know about the history of any country, it is necessary to have some basic geographical knowledge of that country or region because the history of the people is greatly influenced by the geography and environment of the place that they inhabit. Learners, do you know that during ancient times, the Indian subcontinent comprised of present-day India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan and Pakistan. On the basis of geographical diversities, the subcontinent can be broadly divided into the following three main regions and they are number one, the Himalayas, number two, the river plains of North India and number three, the peninsular India. Before beginning with today's lesson, let me tell you about the objectives of this lesson. We will learn about the physical divisions of Indian subcontinent and also recognize the distinct features of each region. We will also understand the meaning of environment. It will be tried to establish a relationship between the geographical features and the historical developments in different regions. We will understand the terms prehistory, prehistoric cultures and microliths and distinguish between the lower, middle and upper Paleolithic age on the basis of the tools that we used. We will also learn about the Mesolithic and Neolithic age and their chief characteristics. Last but not the least, we will also try to differentiate between Paleolithic and Neolithic periods and learn about the prehistoric art. The Himalaya is the world's largest and the highest mountain range. It is approximately 2,400 kilometers long. You can see it on your TV screen. Himalayas have played a very important role in shaping up the history of our country, as they have not only protected us from foreign invasions, but have also protected us from the cold winds coming from the north. However, Mountain passes in the Himalayas have helped Indians in developing cultural contacts with Central Asia, China and Tibet since ancient times. The Greeks, Shaks, Kushans, Huns and other foreign tribes reached India following these routes. Likewise, Buddhism travelled from India to other parts of the world through these mountain passes. Learners, do you know? that the Himalayas have given three major river systems to India, the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. The Indus plains include the regions of Punjab and Sindh. Irrigated by the tributaries of the river Indus, they form a vast fertile plain which have made the region the breadbasket of the Indian subcontinent. It is called so because this region is very important for wheat cultivation. Learners, let me ask you a question now. Can you tell me the name of that civilization that grew in the plains of Indus River and its tributaries? Yes, you're right. It is the Indus Valley Civilization, popularly called as the Harappa culture. We will discuss about it in detail in coming lessons. The Gangetic Basin receives more rainfall and is more humid than the Indus region. The Gangetic Plain is divided into three sub-regions, the upper, middle and lower. The upper plains of the river Ganga constitute the western and southern parts of Uttar Pradesh. The middle Gangetic Plain include parts of eastern Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Tamralipti or Tamluk was an important seaport of this region. In the middle Ganga region, the Mahajanapadas or territorial states like Kosal, Magadh, Avanti, etc. were established in the 6th century BC. The two main religions of India, namely Jainism and Buddhism, were also born here. 
the lower Gangetic plains comprise of the Bengal region. Eastern India normally refers to the coastal plains formed by the river Mahanadi and other rivers, while Western India refers to the modern states of Rajasthan and Gujarat. This region is famous for its black soil, which is good for cotton cultivation. In Gujarat, the fertile plains of the rivers Sabarmati, Mahi, Narmada and Tapti brought prosperity. The most important seaport of this region was Bhrugukach or Baruch. Learners, as you can see in the map coming on your TV screens, the peninsula India includes the Deccan Plateau and the coastal plains of South India. The plateau is situated in the south of the Vindhyan Mountains. It is divided into three major regions which largely cover the states of Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. The southwestern Deccan comprises the state of Karnataka. This region has availability of water and other resources. The Raichur Doab has been known as the rice bowl of South India because of its rice cultivation. The plateau region also has hills in the form of western and eastern ghats. The western ghats have many passes at Junnar, Kanheri and Karle. These passes served as trade routes connecting the ports along the west coast. The coastal plains constitute the states of Tamil Nadu in east and Kerala on west. Kaveri Delta in this part has been a major centre of attraction due to its fertility. This led to the growth of Sangam literature and culture out there. Arikamedu and Kaveri Patanam were the important ports. It is important to note that the settlement of people in any region is largely dependent on its environment. For example, the Sindh region has arid climate and therefore Halappan civilization grew over there. The type of soil also decides that which type of crop will be grown in which particular region. For example, black soil is good for growing cotton crop. Prehistoric period is that period of our ancient past for which we do not have any written records. Therefore, to know about this period, we have to depend upon the material found in archaeological excavations. The earliest man living during this period made tools and implements of stone. These tools helped him to hunt and gather food to feed upon himself. Since the earliest tools used by humans were made of stones, this phase of human development is also known as the Stone Age. Dear learners, on the basis of the different type of tools and techniques used, the growth of human development in prehistoric period is divided into three stages, namely the Paleolithic or Old Stone Age, the Mesolithic or Middle Stone Age and the Neolithic or the New Stone Age. The term Paleolithic is derived from the Greek word Paleo which means old and Lithic which means stone. Therefore, the term Paleolithic Age refers to the Old Stone Age. On the basis of tools made and used, the Paleolithic cultures have been divided into three phases. These are number one, lower or early Paleolithic, number two, middle Paleolithic and number three, upper or late Paleolithic. Learners, let us now learn about the tools of the Paleolithic period. Now, we will briefly discuss the chief features and uses of some of the tools mentioned above. In the figure on your screen, you can see hand axes. Their end is broader while the top edge is narrow. These were used for cutting the trees or digging the roots. The flake tools were the chief tools during the Middle Paleolithic period. We can see them in the picture on your screen. They were used to scrape the skin of animals and bark from trees. The tools of the Upper Paleolithic period primarily consisted of burins and scrapers. The picture shows them. These were used for engraving on soft stones, bones and rocks. The map on your TV screen shows that Paleolithic tools have been found from the Kashmir Valley in the north and the Sohan Valley in Rawalpindi, now in Pakistan. In Rajasthan also, these tools have been found from sites along the Luni River. 
The Paleolithic tools have also been discovered from the sites of the rivers Sabarmati, Mahi and their tributaries in Gujarat. In Maharashtra, the most important sites are Nevasa and Patne. In Madhya Pradesh, Bhim Bhetka, near Bhopal, while in Uttar Pradesh, the Belan Valley, that is, the region broadly between Allahabad and Varanasi is the most prominent site. Paleolithic sites have also been found in Assam and Meghalaya, Bengal, Orissa and Bihar. In South India, Paleolithic tools have been found from Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. In Tamil Nadu, an important site is Atirampakkam in Chingalpet region. The Mesolithic Age is also known as the Middle Stone Age. It was a transitional phase between the Paleolithic and the Neolithic Ages. The main tools that people used were called as the microliths or small stone tools. The microliths were used during the Mesolithic period. They were very small in size from 1 to 8 centimeters long and were largely made out of chipped or flaked pieces. The Mesolithic culture was spread all over India from north to south and from east to west. Important sites of this culture are Langnaj in Gujarat, Bhim Betka in Madhya Pradesh, Chopani Mando near Allahabad in Uttar Pradesh, Birbanpur in West Bengal, Sangana Kallu in Karnataka and Tutikoran in southern Tamil Nadu. The Mesolithic people still lived on hunting and food gathering, but now they started hunting smaller animals which could be attacked with the help of bows and arrows. In addition to this, fishing and fowling also became important. The last phase of prehistoric period is termed as the Neolithic Age. The term Neolithic is derived from Greek word neo, which means new, and lithic, which means stone. Thus, the term Neolithic Age refers to the new stone age of human culture. As seen in this figure, the Neolithic tools had smooth surfaces and they were rounded in shape. The tools were more sharp and polished than those made in the earlier period. The Neolithic tools included different types of axes called celt, various types of bone objects such as needles, scrapers, borers, pendants, bangles, earrings, etc. have also been found from Neolithic sites shown in this figure. The map on the screen shows the Neolithic sites that were spread all over the Indian subcontinent. In the north, western region, Mehargarh in Baluchistan is the most famous site. The excavations at Mehargarh show that the Neolithic people knew how to build houses. They also cultivated wheat, barley and cotton. In Kashmir Valley, Purzahom and Gufkral are the most important Neolithic sites. Pit dwelling is an important feature of these sites. Belan Valley in Uttar Pradesh also has many Neolithic sites such as Koldihwa and Mahagara. In Bihar and Mid-Gangetic Valley region, Chirand is the most popular Neolithic site. Learners, several Neolithic sites have been found in Assam, Meghalaya and Nagaland. In south of India, the Neolithic settlements have been discovered along the rivers Bhima, Krishna, Tungabhadra and Kaveri. Some important Neolithic sites in South India are Sanganakallu, Brahmagiri, Maski, Tiklihal, Hallur in Karnataka, Utnur, Nagarjun Konda, Budihal in Andhra Pradesh, and Payampalli in Tamil Nadu. The Neolithic people cultivated various kinds of crops such as wheat, barley, rice, millet, lentils, etc. Agriculture led to domestication of animals while hunting was an important occupation. The people domesticated animals like sheep, goat, cattle, etc. The Neolithic people also made pottery. Learners, prehistoric people were very talented artists. This is clear from the specimen of art that they have left behind. They made paintings on the walls of rock shelters, maximum of which have been found at Bhim Betka in Madhya Pradesh. These paintings tell us about the socio-economic life of the Mesolithic people. The main subjects of paintings were hunting, fishing and food gathering.
Animals like boar, buffalo, monkey and nilgai are often depicted in these paintings. The social activities like childbirth, rearing of a child and burial ceremony are also shown in the rock paintings. Learners, with this we have come to the end of this lesson. I hope you liked watching this video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.